Okay. <laughs> All right, Maya. Do you remember five years ago, we did the interviews for Kids Under Fire, and I just asked you a bunch of questions about life. Mm -hmm. And the reason I started even doing that was because I started noticing that over like the years of parenting, just with my own growth and development, that maybe I hadn't really given you guys a freedom to think and feel and believe in things like on your own. So I started asking these questions mm -hmm. before becoming a life coach. And now it's been five years. All I've been doing is grilling you guys with questions <laughs> since this day, I think, right? Yeah. And so I thought it would just be really fun to go back um, and ask the same questions because five years has been a long time, right? So how old were you when we asked the first questions? Uh, 13. 13, eighth grade. Yeah. And so tell us where you're at now. Um, well, now I'm 19, almost 20, and I'm a sophomore in college. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've had some like actually big life experiences already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so these questions will be really cool. So are you ready? We're just going to dive in. Oh yeah. Let's go. All right. Let's go. So the first one is what is beauty and what does it mean to you? <laughs> um, beauty can be found in anything. It's up to someone's own like personal definition of what that means but like within people uh, I think that has to do with personality but within yourself it's how you feel and how you think you look a lot of people say like beauty is perceived on looks but um like within people I think it's important that a lot of beauty can be shown through personality and that's what really makes a person so but then there's also beauty with like within nature, like everybody thinks whatever they mm. think is beautiful, you know? Yeah. Do you remember you answering this question the first time? And yeah. do you think it's similar? Because we're going to play them together. Yeah. But do you feel like you have a similar point of view still to this day? Yeah. After watching the video, I, all my answers are pretty like similar to what I would say now still. Mm -hmm. But just obviously, like, I wasn't explaining it as well, so. All right, awesome. Okay, let's go into number two is, what does love mean to you? And holy moly, I bet you've had some love experiences <laughs> since the age of 13. Yeah, well, like, a good definition of love is just, like, a strong affection towards someone or something, so, like, you can love anybody. It doesn't have to be just like uh, a actual like relationship, like a dating relationship. You can love your friends. You can love your family. Um, you can even love people that you don't talk to anymore, you know? So how um, do you think we do that? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but... I do know that some people feel a lot more love towards other people. So it's easier for some people to love more. Well, why do you think that is? Do you have an answer about that one? Like why do you think it's easier human, for some people? I think it's just human nature. And also other people have different definitions of what love is to them. So. Yeah. Which means so, do you everyone. think. <laughs> Do you think love is an a verb or a noun? Can I get the definition of a verb? <laughs> um, Do you think love is just a a thing, or do you think it's an action? I think it's an love action. could be a a noun as a person, place, or thing, and then verb is an action. Yeah, I think I think it's an action. And what makes you think that? Because to show love to people, or at least for them to know it, it you have to do something or like show something just so that people know. You know what I mean? It like is, because we also you are feel. currently loving. Like it is you're doing it. You know, 
whether it's also like subconsciously or not, like you are actively in the process of love or loving someone or something. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Next. What makes a good mom and dad? <laughs> uh, um, well, I don't think there's a good definition for what makes a good mom and dad because some people don't even have mom and dad. So, <laughs> but um, I would just say it's still the same as my answer of when I was a kid, like your figure that loves you and supports you and puts you on the right path. And I mean, it's really up to perception of what your, your definition is, but that, that would be my top three. For your definition. For my definition. Yeah. And how do you, how do you think that's gone for you? I think it's gone. I think it has gone well. <laughs> because did, did we meet your top three things? <laughs> yes. Yes. I think I'm on the right path. I mean, I'm in college. I'm, I would say I'm a good person. So, <laughs> and mm -hmm. you guys have shown me love throughout my whole life and even though it's been like a little bit of a roller coaster those those three things have still always been there so yeah awesome okay what do you think of the world we live in <laughs> it's such a big question for a 13 year old yeah I know but I also still think the same thing no that was your answer no yeah well the world we live in <laughs> has its issues and its problems. And obviously there's a lot of things wrong within the world, but we do live in a good place. <laughs> We're very makes fortunate. It We're very fortunate and grateful. I'm grateful anyway, to have all the stuff that we do have mm. and perspective to like, even like, other places like even the world I live in personally I have a lot more than a lot of other people so mm -hmm. yeah okay <laughs> let's see here if anything what do you want to raise awareness about so what would you want people to know more about mm. Probably because the biggest one that I notice all the time is like mental health and like how mm. people deal with it. And like also like being in college, like um, and like just talking to a bunch of different people, like a lot of people don't know, like some of the issues that they have and like how they could benefit from, you know, like going and talking to someone or just like, you know, just to figure out like, you know, that it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's like a big issue in college too. It's like we, we go, we have a lot of work. They're student athletes. They're always like doing a million different things. And like a lot of people don't know how to deal with it. So yeah. So what would you want to ex express? Like what would be a, the stand that you would say, like talk to somebody about how you're feeling? Is that yeah. what you, you would say? I would say so, but it's also like, it's kind of hard because even though campus has like resources for that, they're not the best with it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that before because um, a lot of people were upset about it because, um, well, a couple people took their own lives last year and mm -hmm. a lot of people were affected by it, but the students did not have the resources to be able to talk to the the school counselors and stuff like that. So yeah. you know that's a whole nother problem in itself but <laughs> mm -hmm. just to be able to give students the resource to be able to talk to people what do you think would open the kids up like from from your point of view and being in it and talking to them and noticing that they do shut down and they're burying those things like what do you think would help them open up to conversations like that mm -hmm honestly like community like connecting okay. like their, how they're feeling with other people their mm -hmm. age it 
definitely like I've always noticed like if I'm talking to someone about something and I like I start the conversation they'll like give back some information you know what I mean yeah but, yeah like, so then do you notice an, a normalcy that happens like it's every it neutralizes kind of how they're feeling and then it's just like oh okay you feel that yeah. too yeah 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 anything else around that mm, that's that's in a nutshell so <laughs> yeah it's a big complex topic right yeah. <laughs> all right Hmm. Have you learned much about our world leaders in school? And now you're in college. Um, and what do you think about the leaders right now? Or what have you heard is happening? Um, yeah, actually, in school, we have not learned about world leaders okay. or anything like that. Because okay. um, college is very, like, obviously, like, subject based on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not government there's probably some people who are hearing about it (laughs) yeah yeah so personally I haven't heard much okay but I know that it could be better (laughs) I know what do you well right now there's like a really since COVID I guess there's been a really big divide within politics and everything is turning into something with politics when in reality that's just not what it is like even with COVID like that was just a sickness it had almost nothing to do with the politic side of it but it turned really heavily into that okay so yeah but other than other than that I haven't really heard much about what's going on right now with the elections coming up and stuff does anyone talk about it no no not until it's like a bigger thing, but also like a okay. lot of people, like our age are really uh, not too open to talking about politics either. Okay. Are they uninterested or are they like, they don't want to start arguments? What do you think Both. the reason is? Both. It's mostly like a lot of people are just like either uninvolved or okay. nobody wants to talk about it because it's going to cause an argument <laughs> and where where do you lie with all of that where are you at um I mostly stay uninvolved because I don't want to talk about it but like if if someone starts to talk about it and I can tell they're gonna be like it's gonna be like a good like progressive conversation like a back and forth thing in a positive way then I'll be like okay like we can talk about this but if it's someone that's like no like I believe this and it is what it is. And I'm like, there's no point in talking about it. So I just stay uninvolved type of thing. <laughs> okay. Do you have, um, do you have your own idea of where you stand in politics? Yeah. yeah, you do. And you will share it with people when that's an open conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And let's see what else. How do you stay educated on politics? Or do you? It kind of depends. Like, sometimes it'll just be from, like, honestly, like, media or, like, uh, someone. We have, like, these class stories for college. Somebody will post something and I'll be like, oh, I wonder what that's about. And, like, look it up. Or, like, I'll see a lot of it honestly comes from, like, TikTok where it just like talks yeah. about like certain stories and then I look more into it because I'm like, oh, I'm curious. But other okay. than that, there's not very much talk about that here. Okay. But social media, it still comes across your feed and you can yeah. still look at articles and that's how you tend yeah. to do it. It's kind of okay. like at, at my own will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would you say that that's the same for most people who aren't actually going to school for that like your friends probably Um, get their education from social media or would you say it's all over I mean I would say a lot of it's probably from social media but a lot of people that I know already like have their views and what they look into so it's still like a okay yeah but it's more like they kind of everyone's looking at what they believe yeah okay got it all righty next 
what do you need to be happy in this life? <laughs> well, for me, family, friends, food, <laughs> my boyfriend, which I don't need that. I don't need any of that to be happy, but that's what is my source of happiness is my people. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Your people are your source of happiness? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> Most of the time. That's like, that's like top. <laughs> but it can also be the source of my not happiness. So. <laughs> oh, talk about that. How? <laughs> oh, why is that? If you think about it, like even the things that make you the happiest, if it's not going well, it's not going to make you happy anymore. Even if like, <laughs> let's say a food makes you happy, right? You don't have it. You're hungry. You're hangry. You're not happy <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? That's like a, it that's did. like a dumbed down example, but like, you know, every, it though. <laughs> everything that can make you happy or what gives you happiness can be taken away or can be like stunted. So so then, so then what? So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta if figure you, it out. That's just life though, you know? There's always yeah. ups and downs and everything. So, but everything always comes back around. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think children can teach us adults about life? And do you have any advice that you would give parents or adults? It was a double question. Yeah. Um, I would say kids can teach adults how to live a little. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not supposed to react. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, adults are like, they're supposed to be like, you know, adults. That's like the whole like, oh, you're an adult now. That's everyone. Like once I turned 18, everyone's like, you're an, adult serious? Now. you're an adult now. It's time to like get, get your shit together you know mm. but I'm almost 20 I still definitely don't have my shit together but also you know I'm still I still have that kid in me where I'm like I know how to live a little bit but I feel like once you get a little bit older you just kind of like set in focus up on like okay I need to get a job I need to make sure everything's in line which like yeah but you got to live a little, you know? <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> what does that mean to live a little? Like, and what is it, what does it mean to get your shit together and to be an adult? Have you figured those three things out yet? Um, To get your shit together and be an adult? No, I don't, I don't even think that's an actual thing. Like people say, <laughs> hear, hear me out. People say that, but like everyone I've ever met, no one fully has their shit together. No one has it fully together. <laughs> Any adult I've ever met is still like, yeah, like, I don't really know what's going on, <laughs> you know? But yeah. you just learn how to deal with it a little bit more. But then, wait, what was the first question? <laughs> um, it was, yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> oh, to live a little. What does it mean to live a little? I mean, that could be like, anything like in a crazy case like you going skydiving like <laughs> that's living a little you know what I mean yeah um but like it could really be anything like even for me just because I'm like uh such a perfectionist and stuff when it comes to my academics like me doing my homework while I'm out on the town like that's living a little, you know, like oh, I gotta get, I gotta get it done before, before the night ends. Like that's living a little for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it could be anything uh, for adults. It's like just getting out of your little life for a little bit and just like doing something that makes you forget about what's going on. I look at it as like the, the routine things yeah, every getting, day or the monotony yeah yeah okay 
cool. I I agree. Whoop, I'm not supposed to do that. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so in the past, we asked about what do you think about gay marriage? And now the questions, I mean, society is moving more towards like the LGBTQ movement. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's more appropriate to really say like, what do you think about that movement that's so big right now? Yeah, I mean, again, personally, like I said, when I was 13, I'm like, you do you. It doesn't affect me in any way. And I'm like, you want to love who you want to love and you want to be who you want to be like, cool. But I do think it's turning also a little bit political. <laughs> so yeah, say more about that. Why? What do you think is happening that makes it that in your mind? It's just like super divided because people people these days have a lot of bias. So they don't want to change what they think they know is right, you know? And, but that's just not the world we live in. Like everything's evolving. You, if you're not going to make it, if you don't change with what's going on, you know what I mean? And it's the same with like, even like biology, like animals that aren't, um, equipped for their environment are not going to be able to keep going. You know, you have to adapt. So it's the same with humans. Like if you're not going to be able to adapt, then you're, you're probably not going anywhere. <laughs> So where are we going? What are we adapting to, though? We're, I think that everyone just needs to be more accepting. Like, the whole LGBTQ, uh, I think they added letters plus thing. Um, like, any, you can do what you want to do, you know? It's not bothering anyone. The people that are in the, like, I guess, like, movement or are part of that community they all are in it's a community like you know mm -hmm. they all mm -hmm. know what each other are talking about they all get each other and it doesn't have anything to do with people that aren't in that community yeah. okay <laughs> so, i see what you mean yeah okay. mm -hmm. everybody just needs oh, to be accepting acceptance yeah. i hear that okay so we also asked about marijuana had just become legal and mm -hmm. now it's been legal for some time. So I'm sure you've been around it. And then we also talked about alcohol. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> this wow. might be funny comparing the two because you're in college. Yeah, so. I'm going to say I'm I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to say what I think, but also play devil's advocate. So I will say. Uh, not to incriminate myself, but <laughs> uh, in college, that's what college students do. Um, I do think, I don't think either of them are like necessarily like a bad thing, but I do think people take advantage and also use it, those things in a bad way. You know what I mean? Like people take it too far. Okay, so what are the bad ways that they're using it? And I mean, we're talking about marijuana and alcohol, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would just say, like, a lot of people in college, like, some of them have never drank or smoked before, so they don't know their limits. And then being around, like, a bunch of friends and, like, hanging out, like, sometimes they just overdo it a little bit to where they're, like, making themselves sick and, like, you know, freaking out, okay. like, stuff like that. So it's just, like, I think there needs to be more... Um, like people need to talk about it a little more, you know what I mean? Which, like, I okay. also, I know that, like, some kids, like, their parents are not as open with them about that type of stuff, so that's where it goes wrong sometimes, but I think there needs to be more conversations about, like, how to safely do it, because no one's ever going to stop using weed, and no one's ever going to stop drinking alcohol, so there just okay. needs to be something where people know the right ways to do substance <laughs> and okay and so if you were <laughs> what are those right ways now that you because before we were just like what do you think about it and you were like I think weed is helpful and alcohol is just the pits it's not good for anybody I mean I and still, so what I are the right ways that. I still think that too though I see what you mean alcohol is not good for you no matter what you say it's not okay. good for you 
and weed, it can be helpful for medicinal purposes, but a lot of people now, like that's when it was first legalized was mostly for medicinal purposes, but now people just smoke weed all the time, which, you know, it is what it is, but, um, wait, what was this part two? <laughs> I forgot already. What? <laughs> I forgot the rest of the question. <laughs> I don't think it was just the weed and alcohol, right? What do you mean? Um, the rest? Of, did I ask two questions? It at felt the same like a, time? it felt like a two parter. Probably. Oh, the right way to use it. Oh, the right way. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, there's no like right way to use it, but it's just like being responsible. You know what I mean? Like a commercial, like the commercials say, drink yeah. responsibly. I mean, it's true because people yeah. do a lot of dumb stuff when they're under okay. the influence. So it's just like. But that's also because they're not being responsible with it. They're getting too drunk. They're getting too high. They don't know what they're doing. They're not in their right mind. So it's just like, you know, you don't have to drink until you forget stuff. You can just drink a little to have fun and it call it good. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. also like everyone can drink and smoke different amounts. So it just depends on you. But like a lot of people will just like go crazy and then they're like, oh no, like, you know, I messed up. So there's no right way, but there's a better way to do it. <laughs> so. All right. Awesome. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, why do you think women shave? <laughs> because it's a beauty standard. And now everyone just does it. Are you still shaving? I, I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And has it become anything different for you over the years? I mean, shaving? I used to care about it way more. And now I'm just like, okay, like if I get to it, I get to it. Like, you know what I mean? But also, yeah, I do like shaving. But I think if I never started shaving and if no girls ever shaved, that we wouldn't even know any different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but like yep. in the world we are and with the standards that we've set, it is something that like, I know other girls too, like everyone likes to have their smooth skin and be moisturized and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a part of that like girlhood. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. There are some more questions in the shaving. Let me see. Um, oh, do you have any friends that don't shave no I don't you don't okay mm -hmm. um is it uncomfortable when you see it I mean no not really yeah I didn't think I, I know other people have different views on it but for me I'm just like okay yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah I hate doing it too <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're at the end and we just are going to keep going for we'll still do the five weeks of these right yeah do you think these questions are hard or easy I think they're easy yeah yeah and ha ha was it different thinking about them now oh yeah definitely what made it what made it different I mean well, I still had like my own views before, but it was definitely more like focused towards stuff that I already knew or stuff that people already told me, which is like a whole mix of things. But now it's mostly just like, you know, I think what I think. So that's what we're talking about. And also like, I used to be way more shy. So it was like hard for me to like verbalize what I'm trying to say. So also now it's like easier in a sense, because I'm like, oh yeah, like, it's this, you know what I mean? <laughs> How did that happen? How did it become easier for you to like be asked these more open-ended questions? Well, honestly, just like growing up, like when I was younger, it was easier to like be able to avoid certain conversations or like not talking to certain people. But like the older you get, the more connections you have to make and the more you have to talk about certain things. And also, like, I had to push myself to be able to do those things. So it wasn't just like, you know, I had to do it. But even like being in college has been like, 
one thing that has definitely helped me like do that because you meet new people every single day you have new teachers every single semester like you have to be able to like just talk to people and you have to have tough conversations with peers friends teachers it's just a whole like different world so it's just like easier to be able to have tough conversations like those questions I guess Mm -hmm. what made you feel like you had to push yourself out into connecting with people and and pushing through the shyness and stuff what made you feel like you had to do that well mostly just because I feel like I like always used to kind of I wouldn't say like ruin relationships but like put a I don't even know the right word for that put like a a kind of like a pause in relationships because I would get like overwhelmed or like there was something I didn't want to talk about when like someone was treating me poorly so I would just kind of like disinvolve myself you know what I mean but obviously that's not like a good way to do it and so also like I would always have anxiety meeting new people so I wouldn't ever try to meet new people but then anytime I did meet new people I was like oh wow this is great like I love meeting new people (laughs) but then I was scared you know what I mean so I was like Okay, well, I like meeting new people. I just need to push myself to do it. So I even told myself like in college, I was like, anytime I have a new class, I'm going to introduce myself to people that are sitting next to me. And I still talk to all the people I've ever introduced myself to. So (laughs) there's that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. And then um, let's see here. Are these answers true and accurate to what you think and believe? Yes. <laughs> Do you still think uh, we have we understand you? Um, do you feel like I don't like to ask these yes or no questions, but before in the other interviews, we talked about you know you guys feeling understood and being able to communicate with us has that changed over the years did it go up and down where you felt like you could and couldn't have your own thoughts and and beliefs Um, over yes um Mm -hmm. mostly like so when I was like in my preteen years like maybe like 15 ish you know you just hit that phase where you're like my parents don't know anything like I'm going to hang out with my friends all the time, like stuff like that. You know what I mean? So for like, that was tough. <laughs> for like a year or two, I just like was like, my parents don't understand anything. And I was just always hanging out my, with my friends and like stuff like that. And then like right when I got out of that phase, I was like, my parents are my best friends. And I tell you guys everything. <laughs> so what did you definitely... recognize? What did you recognize was not true about what you were telling yourself? How did you recognize that? Um. Honestly, it was just like, well, once I realized I'm like, okay, I'm never home. I don't even know what's going on at my house, like ever. <laughs> like all I do is school, work, hang out with my friends and go to the gym. So I was just kind of like, you know, I'm gonna spend some more time at home. And then I started hanging out at home, talking to you guys more, like visiting you more. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was thinking. But then by the time I was like, best friends with you and dad it was time to go to college so (laughs) yeah that did happen huh yeah yeah and so now what's it been like to stand in all these beliefs and all these experiences and go off and be this adult that doesn't have her shit together (laughs) (laughs) what is it like without us it's all right what's it like how's it going I mean, it's, I would say a lot of growth happening still, but I would say I'm like, I'm pretty well off and it's not much like different than how I was at home other than just like, I'm growing up. My perspectives are still changing. And also I still talk to you guys like every day. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, you know, I still don't. What do you think about when you're given advice or um, insight when you call for those things? um, Does it still feel open and understanding to you? Oh, yeah. That's good. 
that's why like I don't ask I really most of the time don't ask any of my peers for advice (laughs) most because this sounds like kind of bad but like most of the time I know what to do or like I know where I should take it but then I ask like my parents all for advice just to get like a a bigger perspective other than like my teenage brain being like yeah like just being a little sometimes I would say like a little immature okay but also what is the immaturity what do you think it is it's just being young like immaturity has to deal with like experience and I mean also like I actually yeah just experience that's actually the best way to put it (laughs) I like that that's awesome okay let me see um do you think this is still fun oh yeah I why, love why, do you, <laughs> why do you like doing it because you love I, talking yeah because I just I like really like talking about things that make people uncomfortable oh. <laughs> you know what I mean you and are also, my daughter yeah but like even with like all my friends like I'm always the one that's like talking about the uncomfortable stuff but I'm also the one that's always starting the conversation for everybody to talk about it you know what I mean? So what do you think that does for you and for them? I mean, for me, it helps me like gain perspective on like what other people think that don't really like, I don't know, everybody has their own perspective on like everything. So it just like opens up new perspectives and like new ways to think about stuff. But then I think for them, it like makes it easier to talk about stuff like that. I mean, depending on what it is, but like it really could be anything that's like a little bit of a sensitive subject, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we did talk about how, if you, if you saw, you know, how, how, what it's like having us kind of shape these things for you. Since we started doing these interviews, did you feel that, you, you know, um, were you, how are you able to shape them on your own? Let's put it that way. How are you able to shape your ideas and beliefs on your own in your in your view? Hmm. I mean, without I, I, us like putting stuff on you, even though we have our own, how yeah. are you able to do that? Um, I don't even this is like a really bad answer but I don't even know because I've always kind of had like my own path kind of like you know I always think what I think which like obviously like I've always like talked to people to gain perspective on stuff and like that's including like you and dad and like other parents or like friends of you guys like because I just like like talking to adults like seeing like what everyone has to talk about and even like talking to other people but I still always come back to like okay what do I think like you know yeah I don't know I don't know how I I don't know how I I don't either I always said since you were born you're like a little old soul you know like a little soul in there I always just think what I think (laughs) that's me too isn't that weird that's it (laughs) how we do that yeah weird how we just think what we think I know (laughs) all right um Do you think you have more to think about based on some of the questions today? Is there anything that you were like, Mm -hmm. "Hmm, I I might want to think about that more? I mean, I think about this stuff like all the time. So I will continue to think about stuff like this. (laughs) Also, it did remind me that I need to look more into government and politics and stuff because this next election will be the first year that I can vote. So there's that <laughs> hey I'm, I'm gonna chime in on that one and say thank you thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> please do yeah awesome oh I love you this is so fun for me yeah yeah I like it's it awesome <laughs> it's it's so fun I love it I agree let me stop the recording okay bye <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do you want to say goodbye to anybody? Do you want to say anything? I'll just say everyone have those tough conversations. Yeah. I encourage it too. I think for me, what this did for us was 
well, we started being able to bridge gaps of understanding or a lack of understanding and communication and, and really knowing what you guys think and feel because you're hearing from so many people out there and I'm mm. not trying to tell you how to be. And so I would say, I hope that the videos can bring awareness to other parents and children to just sit down and, and have a talk for 15, 20 minutes about life yeah, and, and how it's going. So that's what I love about doing this because I, yes, we talk every day, but every day I don't ask you what you think about politics. Yeah. And every day I don't ask you what you think about love and how you're developing as a human being and a person. And so mm -hmm. like, yeah, I can see it, but I love having these talks and know that you're still open yeah <laughs> it's, aw it's awesome yeah because I don't know right the world can change us that's how I feel I feel we can go out oh, yeah. there and we can experience these things and they can start to shape us and change us and so yep. so like reconnect on these questions selfishly <laughs> I like knowing that you know you're doing well and you're still thinking freely for yourself and I love you yeah. so thank you for doing it with me too and we're gonna do Kale's too later yeah <laughs> All right. Now I'm stopping the recording. Bye, everyone. Bye. Love and light. Let me hear you say it, Maya. <laughs> Love and light. <laughs> <laughs>